The most potent cognitive flavonoid is right in our grasp now, okay? If you're into biohacking, which is where you're really trying to forward think by looking at what is sort of evidence-based in a preliminary sense and applying it to your life, then you're gonna dig this about luteolin, okay? Really interesting stuff that's demonstrating it might just be that brain boost we're really looking for. So let's dive into the research on this because it really works in a multifaceted approach and especially pronounced when it comes down to men because it's of impact on testosterone as well. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, the first thing, when you look at antioxidants, and in this particular case, luteolin is an antioxidant, an antioxidant or flavonoid antioxidant, but antioxidants are usually measured by their ORAC score, like their free radical oxygen sort of absorbance capacity, which means how good are they at absorbing free radicals? Okay, luteolin is amazing at absorbing free radicals. That's called the reactive oxygen species scavenging, but it also works upon three other angles outside of that. It also inhibits what are called oxidases that generate reactive oxygen species in the first place. So it doesn't just neutralize reactive oxygen species, it also inhibits what causes those in the first place. Now, additionally to that, something that I'm super stoked on is it protects our endogenous antioxidants. So our body has its own antioxidants, right? Superoxide, dismutase, things like that. The most powerful ones are in our body already. Well, when it comes down to luteolin, it protects our own built-in antioxidants. Okay, and then it also inhibits enzymes that would normally oxidize cellular components. Okay, so a four-pronged approach. It's also eliminating or reducing how these enzymes will mess up our cells, plain and simple. Okay, that's the antioxidant piece, but then there's a different angle from the anti-inflammatory side. Now I have to say, when you look at the world of luteolin, a lot of the research is in vitro and it is rodent model because that's how things start. But I would reckon that you're watching this channel because we like to forward think. We like to look around a corner that we know is there. We know something's around that corner, but it's just not in the peer reviewed literature in humans yet. And it's these things like you know, plant flavonoids and fruit flavonoids that could be powerful and really interesting to experiment with. So there was a study that was published in the Central European Journal of Immunology. This particular paper took a look at 32 rodents and it divided them into a couple of groups. They had allergic mice, so mice that uh, had asthma, things like that, and then non-allergic mice. Okay? And they gave them an injection of either a control saline or luteolin. The results were very interesting. The mice that had the luteolin injection ended up having reductions in all of the inflammatory cells. So they had reductions in lymphocytes, in leukotrienes, and also in eosinophils. Okay, now they also saw that there was a reduction in the inflammatory cells infiltrating the area of the lungs that was associated with gas exchange. So when you look at asthma in rodent models and things like that, there's a specific area where gas exchange occurs and that's where you can have inflammatory infiltration that would impact how much oxygen you get. In this particular case, luteolin seemed to reduce that. Again, it's a rodent model, it hasn't been done in humans with this, but very promising when you look at the mechanistic actions here. But I wanna talk specifically about the brain, right? Like we're trying to really focus on how the brain gets some benefit from this. And when you look at nerves, it's very intriguing because there's a study published in PLOS1 that looked at how luteolin is affecting specifically uh, nerve outgrowth. So let's talk about what that means. So when you are forming new neurons, there is what is called new neuron projection, okay? So this projection is like when you're growing nerve cells it sort of projects where the next bit of growth is going to be, okay? So this outgrowth is very important. And if we don't have this outgrowth, you really can have cognitive decline or at the very least, lack of sort of cognitive enhancement. So a study that was published in PLOS1 looked at uh, what are called PC12 cells that are from rats. And the study found that when PC12 cells were treated with luteolin, it increased microRNA132. I know I'm getting technical here, okay? but what we've seen in other studies is that when microRNA is knocked out, like in knockdown microRNA mice, basically they take mice where they eliminate microRNA-132 from being present. Well, when that is knocked down, neurite outgrowth is reduced, okay? 
So in this particular case, luteolin increased microRNA-132, which implies that there would be more neurite outgrowth and more potential for neuron growth, nerve growth. This is super important. Now, when we dive in more, you find there's effects on cyclic adenosine monophosphate element binding protein, so, which is very, very important as this goes long term, like for basically related to the effects of even calorie, uh, calorie restriction, kind of how this all ties in. I know it's complicated, I'm trying to summarize it as quickly as I can, but in essence, it's helping us develop new neurons and making it a more strategic growth for our nervous system, if that makes sense. Uh, I did put a link down below for a company called Verso. Normally I talk about Verso because they have NMN, which is a very interesting molecule to begin with, but they have a newer product out there called Clean Being, which has three primary ingredients in it. It has luteolin, it has spermidine, and it has dehydroquercetin. Okay, so the whole idea of this compound is to leverage the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects of luteolin, as well as the other uh, ingredients in it, to ultimately have an effect on cell apoptosis and autophagy. So it's called clean being because the goal of it is to help encourage the natural cell cleanup hence clean being. So we look at these things like autophagy, where our cells recycle. We look at things like apoptosis, where our cells go through a pre-programmed cell death because they're no longer needed or because they're becoming so toxic, it's better that that cell dies than cause damage to the, uh, to the body. So very interesting stuff. So clean being from Verso is a very interesting product. I put a link down below. You can use code Thomas and that'll save you 15% if you want to try it out. So they've got a lot of cool stuff and that's also going to get you 15% off site-wide. So if you wanted to try nicotinamide mononucleotide or any of these other sort of biohacking compounds and potential uh, just good clean being like cell senescence products, definitely recommend you check them out. So that link is down below. And again, use code Thomas to save 15% off. Okay, when we get back into the nervous system piece though, how does this effect of luteolin on the nerves and neurons affect the brain itself and actually affect cognition? Our brain is made up of neurons, so we could imply that luteolin would have a good effect on cognition. But what we can look at is some research that's specifically looking at diabetes-induced cognitive decline. One of the things that researchers have seen over the years is that diabetes does tend to lead to some levels of cognitive impairment. So this study was published in the journal Brain Research Bulletins, and it took a look at diabetes in rats. What they found is that luteolin prevented the breakdown of neurotransmitters. So sometimes we see diabetes can encourage the breakdown of neurotransmitters, which makes signals being transmitted throughout different regions and cells within the brain more difficult. So it looks like in rats, luteolin might help restore that or slow down the breakdown of the neurotransmitters. But in addition to that, it looked like luteolin slowed down the nerve injury. So the nerve injury that can occur within the brain or just in general as a result of diabetes could be mitigated or slowed down or possibly even improved. Okay, and alongside this, you have an improvement in cognitive function and a reduction in cognitive decline, at least in rodent models, right? So this is specifically associated with diabetes, but maybe there's a correlation here with just cognitive performance in the first place. You know, if you're looking at someone that is already impaired and you're seeing improvement, what about someone that's not impaired that wants extra performance? One could imply or sort of hypothesize that luteolin might be beneficial for that and something that's relatively inexpensive and relatively easy to get our hands on. Now, where things get interesting for men specifically, this is also important for women because there's other factors that maybe we're not taking into consideration just yet. Luteolin seems to have an impact as an anti-aromatase inhibitor, but it also seems to have an impact on protection when it comes to testosterone. Now, hear me out on this. There is a lot of talk about EMF, like our cell phones, all this potentially affecting testosterone levels in men, right? Well, when you look at the research, it is kind of alarming. Like uh, EMF can definitely seem to at least decrease testicle size and reduce testosterone in rats. It's a little hard to determine in, in humans just yet, but let's look at this research. There's a study that was published in the journal Biotechnic and Histochemistry, it took a look at rats and exposed them to 900 megahertz EMF and found that yes, indeed, it did decrease their testicle size and decrease their testosterone levels. So the study ended up taking four groups of rats, a control group, okay, a group that was exposed to EMF, a luteolin control group, and a luteolin plus 
exposure to EMF group. They found that the luteolin groups, both of them, both the luteolin control and the luteolin and EMF, ended up having an increase in testicle size and weight and testosterone levels compared to the EMF. So the EMF seemed to trigger a decrease in testicle weight, whereas the luteolin acted as somewhat of a protector. This is where things get very interesting. So we don't know if it's the antioxidant component, the anti-inflammatory effects, maybe there's components we don't really know, and maybe it's the anti-aromatase effect where it's actually helping testosterone stay in its testosterone form rather than converting into an estrogen. So there's a multi-pronged approach here as well. Again, everything is just really new and somewhat Greek to all of us as we're learning how this flavonoid is working. Okay? The fact of the matter is, is that when we look at the rodent models, we look at the in vitro stuff, it's very, very promising. And the fact that you can get luteolin from nature, that's the best part, right? We're not talking about some crazy synthetic thing. We're talking about harnessing the power of the earth, right? So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out Verso down below if you want to check out some cool products. And I will see you tomorrow.